Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Dr. Kat. Today's episode, we are talking with Reginald Day. I met Reg at the PSI conference in New Orleans this year, and he is doing phenomenal work. He was one of the recipients of the grant awards that PSI offered this year. And when you hear from him, you will for sure understand why he's doing such important work. And today we are going to be talking about the value of fathers. He is sharing his own experience as well, how he got into this work and how passionate he is about the work that he is doing. You'll also hear how needed his work is. Reginald Day, who goes by Reg, is a certified lactation consultant, creator of Get At Me Dad podcast, fatherhood expert, Southeast Michigan IBCLCs of color, Nature's Playhouse Fatherhood Support Group, and a community health worker. He has also co-facilitated a community-based birth and breastfeeding support group called Meet Nurse Love, where he is served by mentoring alongside fathers and supporting their birthing and breastfeeding partners. He is a married father of two children who were breastfed, and he's made it his mission to change the narrative of how fatherhood in BIPOC populations is viewed. He has a passion for people serving as an associate pastor at his local church. He is a fatherhood and family advocate who believes that great communities begin with strong families. And I I really love that he is working on breaking down some of these old ideas of what fatherhood is, what black fatherhood is, and what BIPOC fatherhood is, and giving us the truth, the real understanding of how actually involved fathers are. And finding ways to support fathers to be more involved and to find ways that they can be involved that maybe they didn't know about before. I'm really excited to get into this episode. So let's meet Reg. Welcome, Reginald. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm really excited. I met you at the Postpartum Support International Conference, and uh, you were one of the award recipients for the work that you're doing. And yes. it's so incredible and so inspiring. I wanted um, the folks who listen to this podcast to be able to hear about what you're doing as well. So, yeah, thanks. No, oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, that was a great conference too, by the way. So I was excited to get to meet you. I was very surprised in the passing in the hallway. I was like, oh my goodness, like <laughs> it's you. So yeah, no, I appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah, no problem. I'm I'm really grateful for the work that you're doing. And yeah, so I want to let everyone know what led you to do the work that you are doing. That's a great question. It's actually a loaded question too, yes. <laughs> because, you know, um, so first of all, you know, I'm a father myself um, of uh, two children. They are 14 and 13 now. So we started this journey um, a while ago, but I was still fairly young when we got on the journey. Uh, and we being my wife and I uh, got married pretty young, had children like right away. And I was very, very much so young presenting. I'm not sure how, you know, Mm -hmm. for those that can actually watch this, how would you think I am? Um, But uh, (laughs) imagine me, you know, 15 years ago, I was 150 pounds, right? Very thin and, you know, very just young in the face. And so walking into a hospital system, you know, saying, hey, I'm married, my wife's going into labor. Uh, unfortunately, people didn't really take me seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, not the fact that I made the statement that, you know, my wife's going into labor, but they didn't think that I was going to be, you know, a father that's actually engaged and involved. And so doctors would ignore me. Nurses would ignore me. I had security, you know, patting me down literally to get to, you know, the uh, labor and delivery fo- floor. And so uh, that was just a very traumatic time for me. Yeah. Uh, when I say traumatic, I mean traumatic. I was going through uh, postpartum depression myself. I didn't even realize it because mm-hmm. I had no words, no language, no one right. actually to walk me through that. Right. Um, and so, you know, we may come back to that, but long story short, um, I had chose, you know, years ago to reframe those experiences because I did not want anyone um, to have to face similar experiences as myself. And if they did face that, not have an outlet. So I chose mm-hmm. to be that voice, that outlet for other, um, specifically fathers, right, to yeah. to come to and to share with um, and creating a safe space uh, where they can be vulnerable, um, but also get resources and tools, right, to know that they're not by themselves. Ooh, um, yeah, uh, there, yeah. There's, there's so much in there that is 
uh, you know, whatever you'd like to share about, um, uh, about your journey, we, you know, are, are, I welcome you to do that. Um, mm -hmm. cause that, that is, that's a, that's a tough journey. Um, it's, I mean, it sounds like, you know, it, it, from A to Z was right. like, oh, this happened oh, and that yeah, happened. Now and I'm that. here. <laughs> now I'm here. Um, but it, it took a lot for you to go through any of that. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, just one of the things I love so much is this um drive that you're describing of mm -hmm. uh, going through something so intense um, and so difficult and coming out of that wanting to help other people there's just something so beautiful about that um but it's not easy it's not easy you know i mean and i guess for me having the opportunity to look back and actually just time to reflect right mm -hmm. and and actually like give myself grace for the fact that you made it, you know, and I'm not one to boast. Like I'm really not, I'm not one to actually, I'm actually more critical of myself than anyone around me. But mm -hmm. this one thing I've learned over the few years is like, no, you were resilient, yes. right? Like yes. for all the things that I know, I, I, the decisions that I made, you know, have regretted um, the fact that in this moment, I am where I am with my wife. We're still together. We have two healthy children. Like, like that's an accomplishment that I, I have learned to celebrate, right? Because yeah. mentally so, mm -hmm. I was actually prepared to, you know, I was trying to contemplate ways to take my own life that mm -hmm. were, would look like an accident, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and it wasn't like, you know, I was like putting um, plans on paper, but right. my mind would like go to these thoughts because of the mm -hmm. fact I felt like I was just not seen and not important. Oh, I was devalued God. by a system that was meant to, you know, help me usher a new life into the world. Um, and not only that, there were so many issues that were existing. I was in school. We were young. We were starting mm -hmm. out trying to get a career going, like mm -hmm. all these financial and social aspects that, you know, I'm the man, I'm trying to hold it together, but everything around, you know, so, you know, uh, people facing, I want to look strong and secure, but inwardly I'm, I'm frightened and scared. And, you know, I have no one that I can literally turn to to say, Hey, what do I do? Like, you know, to cry in the safe space and not be looked at as, you know, this whole term of masculine or, or, you know, uh, uh non-masculine, right. But like mm -hmm. being able to share and not feel shame, right. That right. is, that was difficult for me. Right. And who so do you, who do yeah, you go, go to if that's not already and like if you don't already have an established person where you know mm -hmm. you can do that, who are you going to? Who you go to. And in the black community, unfortunately, you know, mental health is, has been something that was stigmatized for mm -hmm. so long. Like you cuckoo, you know, like mm -hmm. that's the thought that mm -hmm. I've, you know, or the words I would always hear growing up, you know, what's wrong with you? Like it, it was to the point where if you did feel like you had to talk to somebody or you wanted to talk to someone, then it was something wrong. Right. Mm -hmm and not and something looking, wrong with you something wrong with me exactly mm -hmm. right like we don't have those type of problems mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah uh so that period of time you, you were saying that postpartum depression time that was mm -hmm. right after the, the birth of your first mm -hmm. uh, and it was during that time you had those really intense feelings it was it was because you know, uh, again, I mentioned going to the hospital and we, my wife, she was very sick. She had hyperemesis and she had preeclampsia. So we were at the hospital like every other week right? and I would hear and see, right. Not only like, did I feel it, but I would actually see it with my own physical eyes, nurses looking at her, like, you know, give me eye contact if he's abusing you, you know, like it was one of those oh. things where like, <sighs> I'm bringing her here. I'm staying here. I'm concerned. You see the worry on my face because I want to make sure she's okay. And I want to make sure our child's okay. But now you're making me feel like, you know, I am an abuser or, you know, I'm a villain here when we're both in this together. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that aspect, right, that had me looking, you know, okay, you know, these individuals, they don't, they see me as a black man, they see me as a threat, when all I'm trying to do is care, right? So we go into that, you know, that, 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 uh, that phase. And then when I'm actually in appointments, speaking, you know, trying to find out, you know, what do I need to do as a father? Mm -hmm. 
doctors giving me the cold shoulder, turning their back toward me. And so these narratives, right, I don't care how strong an individual is, they begin to play in the back of your mind. Like, right. okay, if they don't see me, am I really needed, right? Is this is this a space that I'm actually supposed to be, you know, even in? Right. Am I supposed to just be, you know, in the background waiting for them to say, okay, baby's born. Here you go. Discharge, go home. Um, So you have, I have that narrative playing. Um, And then I have the other, you know, fact that I'm in school, right. Mm -hmm. We weren't really planning on having a child right away. We were married, but it was one of those things like maybe five, six years down the line, I'm almost done. Let me finish. Mm -hmm. And now we have this on top of trying to wrap up this degree. Right. And trying to find a career like that's, that's, going to sustain now this new family and so we have these pressures uh that's existing so you have all of this taking place and it's like a weight because i have no way to unload no space Mm -hmm. right i don't want to unload on my wife who's already got a lot going on Mm -hmm. to add that stress could cause more you know it's almost like a a a a cycle right like Mm -hmm. If I add that stress there then it's going to only play more on our health which is also going to put us back in the same situation so Right. It's heavy. It it is heavy. It's it's a lot for any one person to bear. Um, So how how did you get through that? (laughs) So I always like to say much prayer. uh, And um, it it takes a lot for me to actually break. Mm -hmm. So that breaking point actually came four years into our marriage, right? Mm -hmm. So now at this time, we have two children. Um, Both are... I guess you could say they're both toddlers at this point, um, early stages of toddler, being a toddler. And um, I had really just blew up. I had really, because I had compressed everything and held everything inside for so long, mm-hmm. there was an anger that was just brewing inside of me, right? right? Like a bitterness and an anger that would that became the only emotion that I could show. Right. right. I suppress every other emotion. I suppress happiness. I suppress joy. I suppress love. Mm-hmm. Right. Any other, I suppress sadness. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my mother passed during that time. Oh my and so I, you know, I cried, but I was like, hold it together. Right. Hold it together. Mm-hmm. Gotta be strong. You know, she wanted me to actually eulogize her funeral. And so I was like, I cannot break down. And so I'm trying to hold it together. To one point I just exploded. I exploded. Mm-hmm and literally almost lost my family it was at that point i said okay is it is it is it worth it trying to hold on to what you know society says is masculine and what you know your community says uh you shouldn't do which is talk to a therapist or do you want to make a change do you love your family that much that you're going to see about getting yourself taken care of and all of your total health which includes your mental health Mm -hmm. and so I took the opportunity and and I actually began seeing a therapist and that actually was the turn for me to have that outlet but also know that it was okay to actually unload in a healthy way and find Mm -hmm. avenues and things so that that actually became a turnaround Wow. So, I mean, that is a long time to suffer. It is. If I, if I can use that word. <laughs> no, it is. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was hard. You know, sometimes I think back on it like a nightmare, but also a dream. Yeah. Oof. Uh, right. So that is, that's a, a, a long hill to climb to get out of that, um, out of all of the, the intensity of mm-hmm. feeling and overwhelm and um, pressure and um, like all of the things that you were d- describing. Um, but wow, it's great that you made that decision to get that help for yourself. It's a tough one. It is really, really hard. It is. It's, it's hard, let alone to go speak to like somebody you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I was desperate, you know, yeah. and sometimes desperation will cause you to do things that you would not normally do, right? Especially if you are hungry for it to the point where like this change is necessary or I'm going to die. And that's how I felt in that moment, yeah. right? Like yeah. if I don't do this, I will die. Yeah, that, I, I just felt that like deep in the pit of mm-hmm. my stomach for you. That That is a, that's a lot, a lot. Uh, so I guess like that coming out of that, um, I assume it took a little while. 
Yeah. So that was four years that, that took me to that point. And I would say it took almost equally that amount of time, maybe three years to, um, and, and, and each year actually progressively, progressively, I should say, mm -hmm. getting better. Mm -hmm. But it took almost three to four years for me to actually feel healthy, right? Like mm -hmm. to rebuild in, in the right way. So really uh -huh. tearing down all those um, negative situations, right? All those negative uh, aspects and influences um, and then begin to reframe them, right? So the, the key for yeah, me yeah, yeah. was about reframing, mm -hmm. reframing my circumstances to the point where I use them to help someone else and understand that what I went through as horrible as it was, right? Um, if I choose to use it to help someone else, it gives that meaning, mm -hmm. right? And by yes. giving it meaning and purpose, now it can no longer fester in bitterness and resentment and anger, right? Mm -hmm. Towards those individuals and systems that hurt me. I'm using this now to change and challenge those systems and to tear down those systems so that we can build something better. Ah, that's so, so cool. So oof, tearing up over here. I, I love that you you came to that that place uh, through through such um ho horrible pain um that you did find that purpose and it's so now um i think you know a big part of what you were describing before is mm -hmm. your um your process of feeling like you were not valued mm -hmm. you were not seen you were not um even talk to as a father right. I mean, we weren't respected as the father um let alone a black father mm -hmm. uh, coming into that hospital system mm -hmm. uh and now it's i mean you understand the the value that you do have it sounds like and yes letting other people know that they have value as well yes yes i think it's important right like mm -hmm. again my experience was to feel and, and very much so be devalued right mm -hmm. um and, and sometimes i can even have my family be honest with you right mm -hmm. like oh you don't know what you're doing you know sure. how mm -hmm. you are you you sure you trust them with that baby right like all these things what are you really saying because they're going somewhere they're just not words that are hitting the ceiling and hitting the floor right they're actually penetrating our hearts and our minds and even as men right we have emotions and if we don't deal with those things if we don't acknowledge what's being said and and and, and put them in the right perspective mm -hmm. it sets up in us a wall that we don't even realize is being built sometimes right and and i say that because that goes to the, the to the necessity of understanding the value that a father has right you know even support people right like the value can never be underestimated because we make the difference and what do i mean by that mm -hmm. well when my wife was going through and the doctor was speaking to her but she's in pain she's not taking in information right no that was my role mm -hmm. my role was to hear everything that was being said mm -hmm. and so when for instance, I'm dealing with a medical system. We're talking to a father and he's being, you know, uh, going into a doctor's appointment. Hey, these are some questions you need to ask. Make sure they understand and see you because when she's not capable of making the decision or actually um, in a place where she can speak for herself because maybe she's in recovery or she's in too much pain, that's the time that you have to come in with whatever plan you had in place together mm -hmm. and say, this is what we agreed on. And this is what we talked about teaching and educating fathers on how to be advocates, because that's what we bring to the table. When she was going through her own issues, medically, number one, needing to check her blood pressure in the postpartum period, because that's right. a very dangerous time. Yeah. Um, I was the one that was like, Hey, what's going on? You look a little, you know, dizzy. You seem like something's not right. Let me go get a blood pressure cuff, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's part of what we bring to the table. And we have to understand that no matter what we see around us, no matter what, you know, uh, even negative words or phrases may be mentioned, we are important because we can sustain the life of our significant others as well as our children, right? And so there's so much more to that, but those are some of the key things that really stood out to me and like some of those things that I like to share now with fathers. Mm -hmm. So like looking back on it now, you can see the value you had, but you, it was hard yes. to experience in part because it wasn't being reflected back to you in, in really any way that you have value here. Correct. But you, you were stepping up and, and doing what, whatever it was that you and your wife had agreed on or whatever mm -hmm. you figured out needed to happen. But it is really hard to, to maintain that for yourself when you're sort of quote unquote being told um, all around you that, uh, the opposite essentially. Exactly. 
that and like, so yeah go ahead i'm sorry no i yeah it, that was it <laughs> no but like i mean that's 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 exactly it right like we don't have that being echoed to us right we or we we, we don't have that being um, affirmed in us right so why not be that affirming voice in this day and time when that's not the narrative that's being shared or told right mm -hmm. um because yeah it's necessary so i'm i'm I'm, I want to get into a, a lot of what you're doing now to, to mm -hmm. su um, support dads, but this is a very specific question to that. Like, how how do you support someone, a, a, a father, to go into a system where still um, they're not, you know, more often than not, I think anyways, not being mm -hmm. given the due respect um, in many ways. Uh, to to continue to to advocate and say hey i'm here and hey i you know I, I, how do you help somebody to to fight against a system that's not listening to them it's not easy mm -hmm. um but one thing we have to first understand is that this is a system that we have presented right so whether we choose to do a home birth whether we choose to do a hospital birth or birth in a birthing center uh we have to understand that these are these are our choices and so now knowing what these choices are when we approach these choices understand how you're being viewed understand how you're being you know received um and understand how you um, are being perceived right and so when you step into those situations already understand and know what they are thinking and 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 i realize that that's a huge assumption right and that's an overgeneralization but the fact still remains like the, my experience was not unique to to my situation 15 years ago mm -hmm. right it still happens today you're, you're hearing a lot of stories like this i'm hearing a lot of stories like this right mm -hmm. and you know the numbers don't lie right mm -hmm. when when um Black women are three times more than likely to die during that whole birthing process, right? Or have issues during that prenatal and postpartum period, right? Like that says something. Mm -hmm. um, and with that being the case, it's like, okay, we know what the risks are. Now let's offer you some solutions and guidance on how to navigate these systems, right? Mm -hmm. Don't feel inferior when you walk into there. Walk in with your head held high. If you're not being acknowledged, say, hey doc, this is a question I have be forthright you know come forward and and and, and be direct right mm -hmm. not in a negative way but be direct and say hey you know i'm the father this is who i am and i have some questions and then you go down the list right if you mm -hmm. confront it early then and, and, and not in you know if you confront it early i'll say that uh, a lot of times you can um offset some of those other situations from occurring mm -hmm. you know appointments for future appointments Oh, right. Like setting the tone, setting the tone for sure. Uh, and setting the cadence yeah. for how it's going to go. Mm -hmm. Right. For sure. So in the work that you're doing now in your, your platform, get at me, dad, mm -hmm. what are all of the, the, yeah. Can you, can you tell us ab about that in for sure. more detail? So get at me, dad is an organization that I started, um, this year, um, became a CLC, which is a certified lactation counselor. Um, not many males are, are um, in that field and especially not many black males. So, um, with that, um, the goal is to, um, educate fathers, right? Adv teach them how to advocate, um, and supporting them so they can be support systems for their families. And so with that, we have a podcast that we do. Um, uh, we have, uh, weekly or bi-weekly, um, uh, fatherhood groups that we host virtually. Um, and so I also do some childbirth education classes, um, with another organization I partner with in Detroit. So it's really getting into the community and letting the community know, Hey, there's fathers that are here present because we want to change the narrative, right? Mm -hmm. We want to change the narrative of how we are viewed so that we can change the system so that we're not facing those same, you know, the same issues that I faced 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's, that's the overall uh, process in which we're going about um, in our organization, organizational focus, excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I'm, I'm curious because you, I mean, you're describing it's like rare um, for male lactation consultants, let mm -hmm. alone black male. Um, how, um, well, and I should say, and so needed. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure it's hard to be one of few. 
um, <laughs> it is uh, for you because that that presents its own challenges. It's like a new idea for mm -hmm. for folks um, who who maybe aren't used to that. But mm -hmm. I, I guess I'm also making an assumption that it's like um, sort of a, a breath of fresh air in a way to to people. Like um, like whoa, how? how Oh, that's what you're I doing? say that I say that and everyone like I get some funny looks like you're what you know, like, what do you do again? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's eye opener. And I use that as I use it as an opportunity, right? Like never waste a good shock. You know what I mean? Like, hey, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> right, I love that. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's all. Awesome. So people, um, People are receiving it well. Receiving oh, people well. are yeah. yeah, people are receiving me well. Like I, I, I can't say that I've had any real negative experiences with it. Like you know, I mean, people are surprised, and then they want to know more. They want to know why, yes, yes, and that's yes. when I can actually dig in, right, and share the reasons why you know I do what I do, and we, you know, we are who we are. So um, I think it's it's important, you know. Yeah, for sure. Um. So in going back a little bit to what you were saying before, um. Yeah, is there is there anything else you would like to add um, or say more about in terms of the value of fathers? For sure. Um, so the other piece that I think is vitally important is recognizing, you know, as fathers, not only do we have the ability to see those physical signs, but those emotional, mental signs that sometimes uh, aren't caught or aren't caught early enough. Mm -hmm. And by that, like mental health for our, our, our spouses or significant others, right? That postpartum depression and anxiety is real. Yeah. Um, and, and for me, again, not having anyone to talk to, trying to fight through my own things, I didn't even recognize it in my, my wife, you know? Mm -hmm. And so she was struggling but I didn't know, I didn't see it. I didn't understand. It, I didn't recognize it. And so we would have contention, right? That's again, those four years building up. And so, you know, she was depressed and she was anxious because she had this new baby. And I'm thinking to myself, well, all you're doing is watching the child. I'm the one more to work and going to school and doing all these things. Right. And so like understanding we can see and head off signs of depression and anxiety if we know the symptoms right mm -hmm. if we hear things that don't sound right like this baby is crying all the time i just want to stick them in a drawer right like mm -hmm. that's an issue right mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. we need to deal with that we need to find out why right like yes. and i'm not saying the person is an issue like yes. that feeling like why is why is why is she feeling that way like let's talk about it. let's see what we can do um, and, and, you know, unfortunately I missed it cause I didn't know. And so now I'm talking to fathers about that. Like, Hey, don't even, you know, don't negate to recognize the signs in yourself, but also, Hey, here's some tips for you to recognize the signs, you know, in your, the mother of your child. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, again, our value is so important because we can, we can guard and we can protect from all these other things. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, that, go far beyond the protection of that physical sense that we think of as a man, you know, if somebody comes to try to hurt you, I'm going to step up. But protection goes far beyond that, you know, and we like yeah. to talk about that with fathers, like think beyond that because protection is bigger than mm -hmm. that. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, and it really does help to have like, you know, sort of all eyes open, mm -hmm. so to speak, to, to catch um, anything. Cause ultimately it's, it, you know, being able to, to help, um, uh, mom is also good for for dad and yes. or whoever's in the family system whoever's helping out like if everybody um can be supportive and and um get get whoever needs help to help mm -hmm. um which I, yeah includes fathers too so that's uh amazing how how um you you had an an interesting uh thing that you said earlier which i think is a lot something that a lot of fathers, um, new fathers anyway, might experience is that, um, it's hard to understand why, uh, somebody who's just like, quote unquote, at home, just watching <laughs> a baby would mm -hmm. be having a hard time. Mm -hmm. And it's also like hard to see when you're having a hard time. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, right. But yeah, I mean, that it's, it, there's more, again, more to the story. It's not mm -hmm. just, it's a massive life change that, both you and your partner are going through right it's a, I mean, it's, a, it's a huge adjustment you know i mean I, w I was just sharing um a little while ago in, in um, a last group that i facilitated that 
when you think about the the fact that you yourself as an individual spent at least a minimum, let's just say a minimum of 10 years getting to know you and getting your own flow and doing your own thing, mm -hmm. then you, you know, you incorporate another person who have, has their own flow and does their own thing, who's used to doing things their own way. Mm -hmm. And you may have some time together when you flow like that, or you may not, but now you have a baby who doesn't work and care about anybody else's clock. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, you know, True. they're like, Hey, I'm here. I'm hungry. I need to be changed. I need to be fed. I want somebody to play with me. Um, I don't care if you're tired. Right. Uh, like right. that's like, like that in itself, that throws all conventional wisdom out the window. What yeah. do you do? Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so, we don't like, I, I'll speak for myself, right? I didn't, I, I didn't see that. I didn't, I'm like, I don't understand what the problem is. Mm -hmm. But when we actually can now step back and look at it from that perspective, it's like, oh, I see how you might have a little issue here, right? Or a big <laughs> issue here, right. you know? And so again, sharing that with, you know, it's, it's a matter of perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Like I can now use my own experiences to say, hey, here's some perspective, right? Now take it and do what you want with it. But just keep in mind that this may be something that could be occurring. Mm -hmm. And now you can kind of, you know, make some better decisions or different choices to help uh, improve, you know, on your situation or actually make better decisions so that you can continue to be successful at the way you communicate. Definitely. Uh, so how often are you doing groups? So right now I'm doing groups uh, twice a month. Uh, we do them every other Tuesday, uh, maybe increasing because um, I partner with another organization as well. And I facilitate a, a fatherhood share session with them um, twice a month, uh, give or take, depends upon the flow of things. Mm -hmm. And and so I, there's more, right? And so I'm actually looking to can you know grow my team as well mm -hmm. um, because I don't I, I don't think it's about me. I have the passion and drive for it for sure. Mm -hmm. But my 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 goal and my hope is that we can really bring in other voices, right? You know, other yeah. fathers' voices, and you know, as a black father who who understands some of the um the ramifications of us not being involved or um really coming forward i want to get more black fathers involved because our voice matters right we can bring and we can speak to this situation where it will be a shocker to people because they're like not used to it right but when we come and we show our passion our interest and our drive it can help save our community but it can also bring so many people out of darkness right like i think about it just as you know a, a, a dark time when you're going through and you feel alone and you feel like you know you're the only one going through this right, right? it's traumatic right. i remember being in my bed and like feeling like a dark cloud over me like that's like it was so vivid you know and when i think about it like you said earlier like it even gives me chills because i can't believe i was in that place but now i'm not right, mm, right. like it's that serious it's okay. just that serious to me yeah right when it touches you and touches your life in that way it there's there is like, there's no way that you can't know that that's a reality mm -hmm. for yourself or for other people. For anybody else. Exactly. Um, right. And it doesn't seem, it, it might not even seem possible until you go through something like that yourself. And there's, it's really hard to know how bad it feels <laughs> unless you have unless known you've how gone bad it through feels. it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But I think still like the information and education goes a long way, even if somebody doesn't experience it themselves. Um, hearing the story hearing how it felt to somebody else and and understanding the like the consequences or ramifications um that stays with you too mm -hmm. so later if you start feeling that way or you notice your partner's feeling that way you might be able to pick up on it even I, more so right and that's why i like to show up like and when i say show up i like to show up for as who i am i like mm -hmm. to be open and transparent mm -hmm. so i'm not just person like you know i can put on a suit and tie and say hey you know everything's well you're going to be fine mm -hmm. but i like to show up as me and 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 let individuals experience me for the realness right mm -hmm. because a real person went through this Yes. And because a real person went right. through this, understand that you're not alone and that if something comes up, you can have tools to 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 successfully navigate through that period of time. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's important that more of us just show up that way. I'm glad that you're doing what you're doing, right? Because it's vitally important to just show up and be a listening ear mm -hmm. a, a, more so than, than a, a voice of reason sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people yeah. just need a, a listening ear. And 
I spend a lot of time just listening to dads, right? Just listening to them and letting them share and get off their chest, whatever's going on, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, they want to be the best they can be. Mm -hmm. And so we get off of our sessions and, you know, our, our fatherhood group, and then they go back, they feel rejuvenated. They're like, man, thank you. I have fathers literally reminding me about the group sometime because mm -hmm. that's just how meaningful it, it and impactful has been for them. Right. For sure. Um, so there, there are a couple of things I want to come back to. Um, one is very specifically, uh, you were talking about the black voice and black mm -hmm. fathers, um, and, and being a, su a support. Um, so, so what I know to, to be true from some statistics that, um, uh, that a previous guest, Dr. Sheehan Fisher, who's a black psychologist mm -hmm. and works in the field, um, he oh, was sharing that, you know, the statistics bear out that black fathers are amongst the most involved. Exactly. Uh, and the, but the stereotype is not that. And that's a massive, massive problem. Mm -hmm. Massively huge problem. I 100% agree. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, the, uh, right there we, we could have a whole separate episode just on this we could <laughs> <laughs> right right so um you know when the when those when the sort of stereotype and the reality are not don't you know they're not they're not the same they're different mm -hmm. um how uh, I, I guess how for for you in the work that you're doing is, is there a way that you're support Again, I, I don't know how, exactly how I want to formulate the question, but like, how do you deal with that? The stereotype versus the truth. So I promote the truth, right? Yeah. Promote the truth and the lie will, will show up for what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, the dads that I speak with and the dads, you know, on a, in a group setting or individual setting, mm -hmm. uh, they're cooking, they're cleaning, they're picking up their children, dropping them off, making sure they get to where they need to go. Mm -hmm. Right. They are involved and for those, and, and I and I say that because we look at the few that are what we call, you know, I don't, really, I hate using this term, um, but the bad apples, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I, I believe they're just, un, you know, they're they're uncultivated, and so we just need to take the time to educate them, which is why mm -hmm. I like to speak to those dads, right? Like, no, you want to throw the dad away and say that he's a deadbeat dad, but why? Are you digging deeper to understand what's going on? Mm -hmm. And so we promote the truth and then we work to educate and work with those dads who we just need to figure out what is preventing them from being involved on the level they want to. I myself almost walked away because I felt like I wasn't valued, mm -hmm. right? I came close to walking away and throwing up my hands because I said, what's the point if I'm not being seen? Well, was I a deadbeat dad for I'm there at the appointments. I'm trying right. to do my best. I'm working. No, I'm not a deadbeat dad. I'm just a dad who now needs some other education mm -hmm. or some affirmations mm -hmm. so that I can stay in the game and do what I need to do. Mm -hmm. And so I promote the truth as much as possible and then educate and work with those dads to find out what other issues are underlying, right? Looking at the iceberg, what's deep, what's going underneath yeah. that, right? Yeah. yeah. And dealing with those things because ultimately I know it. I will, again, generalize, but I will say this, most fathers want to be involved. Right, right, right. And and we're, we haven't yet until maybe recently, I don't know how recently, been giving fathers more of an opportunity to exactly. be involved. They're like, you know, I think like when my brother was born, my dad was in the waiting room. And then when <laughs> I was born, he was in the birthing room. Like mm -hmm. there was... There was a shift in between those two times or before mm -hmm. it wasn't happening and now it is and that has like slowly been happening um not fast enough that um that society is is realizing the importance of fathers mm -hmm. um and involving them without um rather i should say uh, recognizing their importance exactly right most definitely so in, in the work that you're doing, and this is something I've, I've pondered a lot for just perinatal mental health, even mm -hmm. in general, is like, how do you get to the person who doesn't know that this is a thing? Like, how do you help them come to the group? How, the, the person who's like, ah, oh, that's not me. Like, I'm fine. We're good. And not in any, you know, sort of conceited or, or mm -hmm. way like that, but just like doesn't doesn't know yet that it can happen how do you get to them 
so that they can know to come to your group or to get the information before mm -hmm. they have to go through the suffering. So that's kind of like some, some tools of the trade too. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So one of the things, you know, I like to do is, you know, talking to moms, talking to women, right? Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes they have a way to get into our ear um, mm -hmm. and, and show us things or reveal things that we don't know. But the other aspect is just a brother to brother relationship, mm -hmm. right? When you have a brother, you trust your brother. You're going to listen to your brother. You're going to, mm -hmm. they're going to be transparent and open with you. And as you're talking, it's like, oh, wow, like that's that's normal or that's something mm -hmm. that could exist right yeah. it, it's normalizing these things because again for so long especially in the black community they have been abnormal they have been viewed right negatively mm -hmm. and so when you normalize hey you may feel like this or this is something i went through i know a couple of my brothers a couple of my friends like we all do this you know we talked about this hey this is how we and then it's like wow like oh okay so when we have those relationships and those opportunities, whether we're working out together at the gym, whether we're playing basketball, whether we're at a barbecue, you know, whether we're watching a game, it doesn't matter. We are having conversation all the time, interject, interject things into those spaces because those are safe spaces. Those are right. spaces when we're together and we can talk, we can be ourselves. Um, and, you know. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. I mean, I think you were talking about this when we first started out here is that there's you bringing your truth and your mm -hmm. vulnerability to the table is allowing other people to do the exactly same. Mm -hmm. it's really powerful and and uh it's just so needed i mean like we're just human right we're human like, <laughs> right we're right, trying right. to get through this thing and it's hard and uh it, it's hard enough to you know why, why do we have to do it alone yeah i mean we live in a society where everyone you know we see social media everything's perfect right mm -hmm everybody's doing you know was successful when they started out <laughs> in life you know um <laughs> right. when you know I, I i like to counteract that whole thing i'm, I'm kind of like i like to go against the grain in, in a lot of ways like you know no i'm going to tell my story this is the real deal you want to yeah. see something positive go ahead you can get on you know social media <laughs> channels but right. if you want to know how to actually be a successful overcomer then yeah let's oh, let's talk I love that. <laughs> successful overcomer I gotta write that down. That's so. really good. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, well, I, I thank you for, you know, coming and sharing what you're doing and uh, all of the work that you're doing. How, how can you, can you sort of leave us with how you, you know, your, I guess your vision or what you'd like for fathers and black fathers specifically? Oh, uh, there's so much, but in short, understand your value understand your voice matters, understand your voice counts, understand your presence is needed. And when you're not there, it's, it's, it's felt, right? When you're not there, we feel the lack of your, uh, your, we feel your absence, I should say. Um, and know that in doing this, you're changing not only, you know, you're not doing something just for yourself, you're changing generations that we have not even seen yet, right? We're making impact now for the future. Um, and so, uh, that's one of the things I like to show every father and every group and every one-on-one -on -one conversation um, because we need that affirmation. We need that affirmation. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. That's beautiful and so true. Um, again, uh, thank you for your time. Everyone um, can find Reg at get at me dad on Instagram and uh, yeah, get at me dad at gmail.com. Um, please do, um, you know, connect with him and reach out and find out about the good work he's doing. And thank you, Reginald, uh, Reg, for making a difference. I appreciate it, Kat. Thank you so much for having me again. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. You can find Reg on Instagram at Get At Me Dad. And that is also the name of his podcast that you can find wherever podcasts are played. And please do share this episode as far and as wide as possible. We really need to be having these conversations, listening to them, thinking about what's being said and how we can continue the conversation, how we can spread more truth and information and understanding about fathers, fatherhood, and fathers in BIPOC communities. I thank you so much for being with us. Until next time.